morning. My name is Janice Hartman. I'm a Eucharistic minister and lay preacher and a parishioner of St. Peter's Episcopal Church. I will be leading the daily morning prayer right to today. If you have a book of common prayer, you can follow along with the service, which will begin on page 79, if you like. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. And now if you'll turn to page 82 in the prayer book, we'll say together the Jubilati. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. And now we will say together Psalm 23, which can be found on your, in the prayer book on page 612. <laughs> The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will have the first reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, 
but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention that such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now on page 86 in the prayer book, we will say together the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The Gospel according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. The Gospel of the Lord. I found a sermon online from which I would like to read some ex excerpts. It was originally delivered by Reverend Dena Ray Muller on April 3rd, 2011. But I think the message is very meaningful for the time we find ourselves in now. When the disciples saw a man afflicted with blindness from birth, their first thought is about sin. Did he commit a sin, or did his parents do something so horrible that he would be punished with blindness for the rest of his life? They see a man who has never seen a flower, a sunrise, the sea, his parents, or the place he called home. And they start wondering what he did wrong. 
But Jesus doesn't look at him as a sinner. He sees someone to lift up. So he reached down into the dirt of the ground, spit into his own hand, and slathered a paste onto the man's eyes. He touched him. He got down in the dirt. He healed him. He lifts him up because that's what Jesus does. Now, I know that this story of giving sight to the blind, like all the stories of Jesus giving sight to the blind, is about God giving spiritual sight to all of us who are spiritually blind. It's about God showing all of us the way with new eyes and a fresh look into the universe that he made. But that also means that Jesus comes to us and digs in the dirt and spits in his hand and slathers us with paste so that now our new eyes may behold the light of the world. I can't help thinking of God digging in the dust of the ground in Eden and giving us his breath that we might live. God lifted us out of the earth in the beginning, and Jesus is still in the business of lifting us up and opening our eyes and bringing us light. Let us pray. God, who surrounds us with miracles, open our eyes to your presence in our lives. Help us to trust, not solely in our senses, but in our hearts. Teach us to reach out to one another in compassion and love, setting aside pity and fear. Remind us that our flaws and weaknesses as human beings are the very places where you so often touch our lives with grace. Teach us not to blame one another for sadness or illness or calamity, but rather to love one another in every circumstance. Where our vision is impaired, help us to see clearly, to perceive faithfully, to understand deeply. Grant us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to love. Amen. Amen. Now we will hear some music from Andrew Stevens. Thank you, Andrew.
can lead us in a litany amidst the COVID-19 outbreak. This was written by Michael Kerr. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, we come to you in this time of anxiety and uncertainty surrounding the outbreak of COVID-19. As the sorrows of our heart and mind increase, we beseech you to save us from all trouble and fear. Cast away all works of darkness. Be our rock, a castle to keep us safe. For the Lord is our stronghold and sure defense, and he will be our savior. For all who have died, receive them into the arms of your mercy. Grant them eternal peace, and surround those who mourn with your healing grace. Lord, hear our prayer. For those directly infected with the virus, help them recover in good health and restore them in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. For those at high risk of infection, especially the elderly, those with underlying illnesses, the marginalized and the poor, keep them healthy and free from all sickness. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in quarantine, the shut-in and the infirmed, help them find peace, keep them in good health, and renew their mind and spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. For all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, protect them as they minister to the sick, relieve all stress, and provide the resources and space to meet the needs of all of the infirmed. Lord, hear our prayer. For first responders, guard them from all harm and grant them strength and courage as they respond to all calls for help. Lord, hear our prayer. For service industry workers and those forced to work as the community shuts down, keep them healthy, bestow the resources to best care for themselves and their families, and assure them in times of financial and medical anxiety. Lord, hear our prayer. For those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources, have mercy on them, alleviate any fear, and provide for them daily bread and wage. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of this nation and the world, help them make sound and safe decisions to best secure the future of our planet. Lord, hear our prayer. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, as schools remain open, keep them healthy and in good spirit to learn. As schools close, feed those who will go hungry without guaranteed meals and shelter all students who have no place to live. Lord, hear our prayer. For all scientists and those working to find a cure, inspire them towards your truth and help them discover and disseminate a vaccine and cure. Lord, hear our prayer. For all media and journalists, protect them from all harm in their reporting and move them to be a vector of truth and certainty and never fear or panic. Lord, hear our prayer. For all places of worship, embolden them to become beacons of hope and love and help us to gather however and wherever we can, be in person or online, to give you praise. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our church, help them to minister to their flock, fortify them to be faithful pastors, to persevere in prayer, and to build up the family of God in new and creative ways. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young, spare them from harm and fear, and keep them a joyful sign of your love and light. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parents, build in them strength and fortitude for the time ahead, and give them the words and witness to be wise counselors and compassionate caregivers. Lord, hear our prayer. For calm amidst the storm, as the waves toss our boat, and we wonder, do you not care? Remind us 
to not be afraid, that with you all things are possible, and that even the wind and sea obey you. Lord, hear our prayer. Stir up in us a spirit of compassion and tenacity for the time ahead. Amen. Move us to check in with loved ones at high risk of infection and those in quarantine. Amen. Ease our fear and anxiety that we may share our resources rather than hoard them and extend a helping hand to those in need. Amen. Inspire us to share the good news of your love and hope. Amen. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, healer of the sick, ruler of the tempestuous sea, and Savior of the world. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now turn to page 96 in the prayer book, and we will say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now on page 97, we will pray the suffrages A responsibly. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And now on page 101, let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now on page 102, we'll say the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as we best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.
to thank Andrew Stevens for his music this morning, and I would like to thank Desmond Phillips and Dave Sparrow for being our videographers. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Steve.